This is the spin two quad helix that comes together like this. And these are the spinner counts. One, two, three, four, because we need one, two, and then one, two, and then this makes a spin two. And we could separate this and we can have over here, you can see it's the spin one and then another spin one. If we put them together, we get the spin two right here because this is spin two, spin one, spin one. And then over here, we have a spin zero. So basically it just goes or and breaks apart. And what's interesting is we have four channels. One, two, three, four. These are the four channels. These are the channels that we can have. We can have channel one, channel two, channel three, and then um, we can also have a quad helix as a channel. Um, that's gonna have four channels and they have to connect together like this. One, two, three. And just realize that as we do that, we get this right hand rule situation. And you can see over here, if we do that, we get another channel sort of popping out that direction. So we have four channels, like one, two, three, with a with a, a hypercharged magnetic moment. So that's essentially what this piece is doing right here. It's just a scalar magnetic moment. And then these are possible ways to connect three different helixes together. Now. We'll start with gravity down here. As we can see, it's kind of, we have to sum up the hypercharges. So we're trying to cancel the anomalies by summing up hypercharges and making them all equal to zero. But what we're gonna start with is the gravity one. So we have to basically connect um, copies of this quad helix together. We're gonna say quad helixes one, two, and three. And these are actually gravitational weights. But just realize that when gravitational weights uh, project, they actually project only the U1 projection onto what they're going through onto their channel. So if you send a, a gravitational wave through to channel one, channel two, and channel three, they're only gonna put out a single helix strand. Okay, it's only gonna project one time. So that just means that when we sum up the charges, we're only gonna take uh, one dimension and we're gonna sum up all the, uh, all the charges like that. So that's basically a trivial uh, addition and we're gonna kind of get one, two, three of them together, but they're only gonna count as single helixes. So that's why you get this sort of a, a sum of the U1s. And realize that this spin two field right here is always gonna be projecting that U1 because we're gonna send, the only thing that lives here is gravitational waves, but um, the only thing that we can sort of send through here, doesn't matter if we're sending a quad helix, uh, a triple helix, a double helix, or a single helix through here, the spin two field is only ever going to project this U1 um, as, a, as a current. So, uh, just keep that in mind, we're always gonna have a little U1 popping out over here, coming from that channel. Now let's go into, uh, for example, the next one it says U1 to the third. That's because we're gonna be sending three U1s together. And you can see it's basically the picture right here. Um, and since we're sending three original U1s, not, you know, gravitational wave projections to U1, but original U1s, we're getting the charges to the third power here. So while well, this was just a projection into U1, giving us a just straight hypercharged summations, here we're doing three real single strands that we're connecting them together. So we have to do a Y to the third. Then we go into this one where we're gonna connect uh, three double strands. But just remember that this one always projects a single, so you only get one. And then you're gonna have two others coming from sort of the left and the right here. And so you kind of get this uh, triple situation. And then you have the hypercharge right here in the middle. So it's going like this. And you can see it's pointing out that way. And that's giving you the charge right there. That's the hypercharge. Boom. So that's giving me that one. Uh, the same thing happens with the, the triple helix. It comes through like that, a little triple helix. And since it lives in the same field as this, it's going to be basically the exact same calculation. Uh, we're sending double helix strands or triple helix strands through here. And they all just kind of give us the same type of... Uh, calculation over here.